Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change a timer on your washer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, we will need to make sure that we pull the washer far enough forward that we can tilt the control panel back. So you'll first of all want to disconnect the power. Either unplug the washer or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuse. Once we've done that, we'll pull the washer forward and start the repair. Now depending on the model of washer that you're repairing, to tilt that console back, you may either have a screw through the front, through the rear, a removable end cap piece. If you don't have visible screws or an end cap that comes off, try taking a thin putty knife and sliding it in under the front and see if you meet the resistance of a spring type clip. On this particular model, there are screws that secure that console to the cabinet, so we'll need to access those from the rear. As mentioned on this particular model, the retaining screws for that console are located on the back. These screws are about an inch and a half long, although they don't have to come all the way out. They do need to be backed off enough that they're not fitting into the plastic insert on the top of the cabinet. So we'll do both sides. Once they're loosened enough, we should be able to push both of those end caps forward. That will release them from the top of the cabinet. We can then roll that console over and access the part. Now to remove that timer, our first step is going to be to remove that wire harness connector first. There's a locking tab. We need to disengage. So just by fitting a flat blade screwdriver in, just lift up on that tab. Those connectors are on there quite tight. So we need to pry it off. This is the locking tab that we were talking about. Now with that pulled out of the way, our next step will be to remove the timer knob. There are typically instructions to do that listed on the back of the timer. What we need to do is to Take a small flat blade screwdriver, gently pull back on that center tab, and that will release the timer knob. So we'll just fold the console over for a moment. Remove the knob and the timer dial. Now with the timer dial removed, inspect the inside here. In some models you may have this little retaining screw that supports the outer shell of that console and attaches it to the inner portion of it. If that screw is present, you'll need to remove that. And that screw is typically a 3 16 hex head screw. Now next we're going to fold that console back. Now on the one end of that timer, there's a little locking tab. We're simply going to lift up on that while pushing the timer towards the center of the console. That will release the three legs that attach it to the metal frame. We can discard the whole timer and we're going to line up those two rear feet and the hook on the front. sure that hook is just above that tab is pressed firmly in there so that it will engage. Slide the timer towards the outer edge. When the locking tab engages, that indicates that it's centered properly. While we have the console still tilted forward, we can go ahead and reattach our wire harness connector. Make sure it is pressed firmly all the way onto that timer. And just check the bottom side to make sure that that locking tab has engaged. 
Now next we're going to retract that center shaft on the new timer if it's pushed in. Then we'll roll the console forward. You can reinstall that retaining screw. If you inspect the base of that timer dial, you'll note that there is a large rib and a couple of small ones. They will line up only one way on that timer shaft. So line those up properly. Press it firmly into place. Now the timer dial itself will line up with those two prongs. Press it firmly into place. And we're gonna rotate that console back again. And while holding the knob in position, we're simply going to press that locking tab or shaft fully into the knob. And that should lock it in place. We'll just check that by Pulling out on the knob, making sure that it doesn't pull off. And now we're ready to fold the console back down onto the top of the cabinet. So next we're going to tilt that console forward. And we want to make sure that these hooks on the end caps fit into the rectangular holes on the top. And there's a little guide hole on the front here as well. Make sure that lines up with this tab. And then we'll, once we have those lined up and sitting flush, we'll just push it back slightly. Now with it pressed back firmly, we'll then tighten the two screws to secure the console to the cabinet. If the console is in the right position, the screw will go right down into that nylon insert. Do the same for the opposite side. And now we can push the washer back into place. Now that we have the console back in place, we're ready to push the washer back into position, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.